Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So we're winding down. You guys are uh, working on homework seven. Uh, I'm gonna release homework eight on Wednesday. I'm gonna be talking about uh, uh, the final assignment, so that'll be an important lecture. Uh, there's some extra topics that I fit in in these last few lectures. Uh, I've mentioned how we're trying to uh, kind of do the best of computer science topics and best of OOP topics, and we don't quite do uh, justice to either, uh, but you know, we fit in what we can. So today's gonna be an object-oriented programming lecture. Uh, I'm gonna go through an example with you that uh, will allow us to explore some issues related to object-oriented design. Now, this is a big topic, object-oriented design. It really deserves a lot more uh, coverage than we have time for. So I'm just kind of giving you a taste of what's there. Trying to, I'm trying to give you a, a bit of a preview in a sense or a, uh, so that you can see what it is that we haven't had time to get to. <laughs> uh, well, I think you'll, you'll find it uh, interesting, I think, uh, these different examples that we go over. Uh, our question of the day last time had to do with what kind of weather we like. I, I'm one of these rainy people. I li actually like rain, so I would have been in that last group. Um, okay, uh, well, let me switch over to Jay Grasp. So um, I, I wanted to remind you about something, uh, and, and so I, I want to relate a little bit of what we're going to do uh, here at the beginning with something that we saw at the end of Friday's lecture. So in Friday's lecture, we had this angle class that we had set up, uh, and uh, we uh, had it implement the comparable interface so that we could call uh, collections.sort uh, to put it into sorted order. And you may remember that uh, uh, at the very beginning of the lecture, when I tried to compile this code that would call collections.sort, it gave an error message. It's, well, because we hadn't yet implemented the comparable interface, we hadn't told it how to compare angle objects, and so we got a compiler error. Uh, it, didn't, it, it didn't even compile uh, until, we, until we fixed that. Well, here's the sample code we're gonna work with today uh, involving uh, a bunch of different shapes. So there's three kinds of shapes that I want us to be thinking about. I have a class for keeping track of a circle uh, of a given radius. I have a class for keeping track of a rectangle with a length and a width and a square. Uh, that has a single length uh, uh, value uh, for it. Notice that none of these classes implement the comparable interface. So none of them implement comparable. So over here, what I did is I made an array of type object uh, that I fill up with a bunch of these different kinds of shapes. And then I have a little for each loop that prints them out. Uh, I do a blank line and then I call arrays.sort. So what's gonna happen when I call arrays.sort? And so, I mean, you saw that none of those classes implement comparable, and it's even more basic than that in the sense that this is, from Java's point of view, this array is of type object. The individual elements are object, and object does not implement the comparable interface. So uh, what's gonna happen when I, when I try to compile and I try to trick the class into saying that it's gonna be the same thing as what happened on Friday, uh, that this isn't gonna compile? Uh, but if I hit compile, it does compile. So, how, uh, so uh, why is it behaving differently today than it did on uh, Friday? Well, uh, we, we kind of had three different versions of the comparison that we were looking at uh, on Friday. Uh, when we were dealing with an int tree, we could just ask whether something was less than or equal to a certain, you know, another value. You know, ints can be compared with a less than or equal to. That didn't work so, uh, because we're dealing with objects. So we need to call a compare to method. But uh, when I, so I, I've put it back to kind of the way it was originally with the search tree of E, uh, just to kind of show you if we kind of come back here and if I hit compile, uh, this doesn't compile, this version of it. It says cannot find symbol compare to. The thing is that in this form of it, where we just say that this is search tree of E, if all it knows about it is that it's of type E, then it's as if it's of type object, and it says, I don't know that it has a compare to method. So the initial way that we got around that 
was by using this third version of it where we, where we cast to comparable of E that value. So let me just go ahead and remind you, this, this compiled, but it gave us a warning. It uses unchecked or unsafe operations. So this approach, it, it, you get past the compiler with this approach, but it's warning you that, that some bad code might, might end up uh, uh, being used here. You know, in particular, uh, it's saying, trust me, it's going to implement the comparable interface, so I'll be able to do that cast. But you remember from our midterm question on inheritance that that cast may not succeed. So at runtime, it's going to verify whether it's actually uptype comparable, and if it's not, then we get an error. And that's actually what's happening here, is that this is kind of done in that way, where arrays.sort has been done in the way, in, in this way, where you know, it, 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 we pass the compiler even though we're giving it something that doesn't implement comparable. So what we expect to have happen, and we'll see this in a minute, is that when we run it, we're gonna get a runtime error. It's, gonna, it's got code just like this line of code here where it's trying to cast a comparable, and that cast is gonna fail. So we'll see that in a second. That's, that's the way this code behaves. That's kind of the, uh, the way arrays.sort works. So arrays.sort is written in this way where uh, the compiler doesn't verify for you that the sort is going to work. Arrays.sort goes all the way back to the beginning of Java. You know, this, this was there from the very beginning. Java didn't introduce the generics, the of E, you know, version of things until Java 5. So uh, arrays.sort is the old fashioned way of doing things where we would be doing an unsafe cast like this. But I showed you that uh, kind of in the last few minutes, the last version of this we looked at, that you have an option here of saying not just any old E, but an E that extends comparable of E. So uh, we're able to add an extra constraint uh, in, the, in the class header where we're saying that it's not just an e, you know, a regular E, but an E that, that extends the comparable, then we didn't have to do the casting. And then when I hit compile, that compiled. And this is the one that's like collections.sort. So if you try, uh, you know, if, if we were trying to do the same thing here, if you tried to give it an object list, for example, uh, to use, uh, it, you know, or you know, that, that you basically said search tree of square, you know, one of these classes that we have over here that doesn't implement comparable, or our original version of angle, search tree of angle, before we had done the compare to, this one would generate a compiler error message as well. So this is kind of the more modern way to do it, the ever since Java 5 way of doing things is to have these extra constraints in the header, and then the compiler checks it for you, rather than having this kind of warning about it being unsafe. So anyway, two different approaches. Arrays.sort uses the old style approach that does casting, and then the new style approach is what collections.sort does. Because remember, this one was using collections.sort, which came later, you know, so that was kind of, uh, probably was introduced with Java 5, uh, the collections.sort. Okay. Well, let me show you, let me try to, let me, let me prove to you that uh, what I said happens is going to happen. So this one compiled, but what's going to happen is that when we call sort, it's going to try casting to comparable like we had in that other code. So I've hit compile, let me hit run. And so what it does is it begins by printing out these different uh, uh, shapes. So I had a square that was 12 on a side, so it had an area of 144 then a rectangle that was 15 by 13 uh, by 3.2, which was a rectangle with an area of 48. Then there was a circle with a radius of 8.4, which has this as its area. So what's happening here is just kind of this little loop right here, where it's just printing out the things in the array uh, in the order in which they were added to the array. So that's what it's doing here. And then it prints a blank line. And then it, it tried to do the call on arrays.sort, and that's where we got a problem. That's where we got a class cast exception. And it says class rectangle. You notice that uh, we've got a rectangle here. Class rectangle cannot be cast to class java.lang.comparable of rectangle. So it's letting you, that, that's, that's that cast. You know, the, the, that's that runtime error that we get. That's, that's why it was considered an unsafe operation because it knew this could happen. 
if you gave it a class like this rectangle class that doesn't implement comparable. So this, we're going to have to say, implements comparable. And uh, what I mentioned on Friday is that all of the problems I'll ask you to do that involve comparable, the, uh, the thing that you, uh, that you can compare to will always be of the same type as the class. So like if we use rectangle here, we use rectangle here. If this was foo, this would be foo. So uh, uh, I mentioned that that's the kind of, of problems that I'm gonna ask you to do either for homework or for the uh, exam. Um, if, I, if, I, if I say that I implement the comparable interface and hit compile, it gives an error message. Rectangle is not abstract and does not override abstract method compared to. Well, I mean, you can't just claim to implement the comparable interface. You have to actually implement the comparable interface. So what was the comparable interface? It had a, a, a method that returns an int called compare to. And so uh, we would compare to some other rectangle. So we have to decide, you know, uh, how do we want to do, how, how, we wa how do we want to compare things? And what I had in mind is I want to put it into sorted or, uh, order by area. So things of the smaller area should come earlier, larger area should come later. So uh, we saw last time that we could compute a difference so, and use that to, for the comparison. So let me say that I want my area minus the other one's area. So that, I'm going to look at that difference to figure out what to return. And we saw a trick last time where you could just kind of return that difference uh, because, well, think about it. So suppose that my area is 2 and the other one's area is, you know, 80. Well, then my 2 minus that 80 is a negative 78, and I return a negative, and that means that I'm less. My, my area of 2 is less than the area of 80. If I had an area of 80 and it had an area of 80, then the difference would be zero. We'd be returning zero. Uh, if I had an area of 80 and the other one had an area of 2, then my 80 minus the other one's 2 would be plus 78. And so I'd be returning a positive integer to indicate that my area is greater than the other one's area. So that was kind of the idea that we talked about in the Friday lecture. Uh, and if I hit compile, I get an error message, incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from double to int. It doesn't like the fact that I'm working with a double. Um, so uh, how do I fix that? Uh, and I always, whenever I have an audience, I always get students who suggest, let's cast. So let's cast to an int. Uh, so, you know, it's not happy because it's a double, so uh, we'll do an int instead. And if I hit compile, it compiles. Uh, and actually, if I ran the program, uh, you know, uh, well, we've got more to fix besides this, but this approach works a lot of the time. So like it works in the example I was giving with an 80 and a 2, you know, it would give the right answer in a case like that. But casting to int is not a good idea. So this is, this is a, 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 something that you need to understand for your final exam. You know, that uh, the example that we looked at on Friday with the angle class involved int values. And then we really could just return the difference. Here we're dealing with doubles. So it's important to kind of understand what we should do in the case where we're returning doubles. So uh, by casting the int, we're throwing away some information. Often that information is not important like in the case of the 80 and the 2. There's a big enough difference between the two that even casting the int is going to give us the right answer. But then I normally ask the class, give me a difference where it matters. Tell me a value of difference where it matters. And so people will give me an answer like 0.5. Suppose that the difference between the two areas is 0.5. Well, then they're not the same you know, because they have a difference in area of 0.5. But when I cast, cast chops off after the decimal point, right? So 0.5, when you cast to int, is going to become a 0. You would return a 0, which means they're equal to each other. So you'd be saying that these two shapes that actually have a difference of 0.5, that there's no difference between them is what you'd be saying. So that doesn't work. Uh, sometimes people suggest doing things like 10 times the difference or 100 times the difference or something. And that makes it work in more cases, but it still doesn't make it work in all cases. You know, the point is that 
that uh, we don't want to be chopping off part of that difference. Well, the advice that I give people is when you're dealing with a double, then just go back to what we did originally. I mean, it was a cute trick when you're dealing with int values to kind of return the difference, but here we can just have the if-elses. We can say uh, if the difference is less than zero, then we'll return a minus one to indicate that it was a less than relationship, and else if the difference is exactly zero, that's the case where we will return a zero, and otherwise, that's gonna be a case where we have a difference that's greater than zero and we can return plus one. Uh, so uh, my advice for, uh, is that when you have a, a double like this, you just write it out. So uh, if the exam question that I give you uh, involves doing comparisons on doubles, write it this way. Uh, just write out the if-else. Let me make sure this compiles, and it does. Well, let me come back over here I uh, don't think I need to recompile, but it doesn't hurt to recompile. And if I run it again, I get an error message, java.lang.class cast exception, class square cannot be cast to class rectangle. So I think that what's happening here is that the first comparison it's doing is between this square and this rectangle. So it's basically saying, look, you said you're gonna be comparing the rectangles against rectangles, and here you're trying to compare it against a square. So I shouldn't implement comparable of rectangle, I should implement comparable of square, because I'm gonna compare it against a square. Is that the right thing to do? Well, sometimes I'm gonna compare it against a square, sometimes I'm gonna compare it against a rectangle, sometimes I'm gonna compare it against a circle. You know, I wanna be able to have all three kinds of things. That's how, you know, they're jumbled within this array. There's all three kinds of shapes that I have in there. And so I wanna be able to compare a rectangle to any of these. So this is a case where we need some extra type. We need to have some common type between these three things so that we can kind of have one way of referring to it. So uh, what I'm gonna do, let me set up a new Java file. I wanna have either a class or an interface, and we'll talk about which one, that I'm gonna call shape. So uh, that's what I have in mind, is that I wanna be able to have a shape so that that way here, I can say comparable of shape. So this is a case where they don't match, right? You know, we're gonna have rectangle here, but we're gonna have shape here, so they don't match. But that's okay, I mean, this is a different, this is a, a more specialized case. So, I mean, it does happen sometimes that you don't, you know, have those things match exactly. As I've said, the ones that I'll ask you to do on homework or on the exam, it'll always match. But here's an example we're seeing where it could make sense to use some other type. Well, so, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna uh, 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 implement comparable of shape, then compare to will take some, a parameter of type shape. What do you need to know about other? What do we do with that other? Well, there's only one place that we refer to that other, and that's here, where we ask for its area. So the only thing that we need to know about this shape, we need to know that it has an area method. That's what we need to know, that it has an area method. Uh, and that'll allow us to write this compare to method. Okay, uh, if, we, if we say that we want it to have an area method, um, then should we use a class or should we use an interface? Uh, again, it's too bad that I don't have an audience because I get interesting discussions about this. Um, there is a rule of thumb in object-oriented programming, object-oriented design, that if you can accomplish something with an interface, then you should use an interface. That you should only use a class if you need it. So if it, if it can be done with an interface, it should be done with an interface. And why is that so? Well, because in terms of inheritance, you can only extend one class. You can only have one inheritance relationship, but you can implement as many interfaces as you want. So it's, it doesn't um, constrain the design that, that a client would have. If somebody was trying to, to plug into our framework uh, and add their own shape class uh, to this, uh, 
then uh, an interface is better for them because then we're not uh, kind of choosing their inheritance relationship for them. So uh, what we want to know is that we have a public double method called area. And normally in a class, we have a left curly brace, some lines of code, and a right curly brace. Uh, we refer to this as the body of the method, you know, that we define the actions that we would do for this. But you may remember when we talked about interfaces that I said that you don't have a body, you don't have this, this uh, the set of curly braces, you instead do the semicolon in an interface. So if this is going to be an interface, this is the way that we would do it. So let me do a save command. We do want to save it as shape.java. Let me try compiling it. And then that compiled, which is good. Uh, let me, I'm going to make a copy of this compare to method. So let me make a copy of that code. Um, and uh, uh, I want us to think about uh, whether this is set up properly. Because I'm going to change the other two classes to match what we have here. Uh, in fact, why don't we do part of that? I mean, what I had in mind is that I'm going to put the compare to method over here in the circle class. And I'm going to come over to the square class and I'm going to give it the compare to method as well. So all three of them have a compare to method uh, that compares things to a shape. And so, but I, but I want to think about the header. What do I put in the header? Because I want, you know, I, if I'm going to do it on all three, I want to make sure I've got it right. Is this the right header to have? Well, so we wanted things to implement the comparable interface. And we say that it implements comparable of shape. So that means we can compare a rectangle against anything that's of type shape. What things are of type shape? You know, so uh, shape is an interface, and who implements the interface? Well, right now, nobody implements the interface. Because we, you remember, you only implement the interface if you claim to implement the interface. So Java requires you to explicitly say that you implement the interface. It's not enough that you qualify to implement the interface by having an area method. You have to actually say it. So like for a rectangle, we could say implements shape, comma, comparable of shape. It implements two interfaces. It implements both the shape interface and the comparable of shape interface. So we could do that. And we, so we could, this, would, this would, would be something that would work because it basically says that, uh, that rectangles are of both of those types. It's a, it's a shape and it's a comparable of shape. Uh, so that, that would be good. Uh, but before we do this with the other two classes, I usually ask, does anybody have any thoughts about this? And uh, uh, one of the things that I'll point out is, you know, so we're going to say implements shape comparable to shape, shape comparable to shape, shape comparable to shape. Would you ever want to implement shape without implementing comparable of shape? Uh, and the answer to that is no. Because, you know, the whole idea is we're trying to set up a, a system here where all of these different shapes can be compared to each other. So if you ever implement shape, you'd better implement comparable of shape as well so that we can have, you know, like we have in the client code, we can have an array of these things and they all can be compared to each other. So what people will sometimes suggest is, could this requirement, the comparable of shape, could that be incorporated into shape itself? So that could shape kind of mean both shape and comparable of shape? And the answer is yes, we can do that. So you can kind of go to this shape interface and you can say that it implements comparable of shape. So you can add an extra constraint that shapes are required to implement the comparable of shape interface. Uh, there's a, a, a a kind of obscure detail, you learn all these details when you study the design more, but uh, when, when you have an interface, so shape is an interface and comparable is an interface, and when it's an interface-interface relationship like this, you don't use the implements keyword, you use the extends keyword, the way we do with an inheritance relationship. So if, if they're both interfaces, we say that the one interface extends the other interface. Uh, so we're going to say that the shape interface extends the comparable of shape interface. So if you want to claim to be a shape, you have to satisfy both. 
you have, to, you have to satisfy the shape interface that has this area method, and you have to satisfy comparable of shape, so you have to have a compare to method. So it kind of requires both. Let me compile this here. Let me come back over here. So now we can just say implements shape, and we don't need to, to also say comparable of shape, because saying that you implement shape means that you implement comparable of shape. And we can come over here to the circle, and say implements shape, uh, and let's compile, make sure that works. And we can come over to the square class and say that it implements shape, and we can compile. So now we have three different kinds of classes, each of which uh, implement shape and they implement comparable of shape. Uh, over here in my client code, I can actually say this isn't just an object array, this is a shape array. It doesn't really matter a lot, but now that I have uh, something that I can use to refer to, you know, kind of what these things have in common, it's better to use shape, you know, as the thing that they have in common rather than object. Uh, but let me go ahead and compile, and we'll run this version of the code. And so what it does is it printed out the original uh, uh, set of shapes, in the order in which they appeared in the array, which is good. Then there was a blank line, and then it's showing it to you again, and notice that the first shape now has an area of five point something, and then an area of seven, and an area of 23, area of 43. So it put them in a sorted order. It worked, you know. So that was this code here that we called arrays.sort, and then printed it out again. It worked. So we, we, we've got a, a solution uh, that's, that is a working solution, which is good. Uh, we're going to make some changes to it. We're going to explore some other possibilities. I did want to mention um, something first. So uh, if, for example, uh, suppose I made a new square object that was uh, 3 by 7, for example. Uh, I can uh, do that uh, new, oh, not, not 3 by 7. The square has only the, uh, the 1. Uh, I could have made a rectangle that was 3 by 7, but a square, we would just give it one parameter. So, you know, I can make a new square, I could show you that I can make a new circle, I could make a new rectangle. But I wanted to point out, you know, or have you think about what happens if I ask for a new shape? Well, this is with shape being an interface. Uh, and I mentioned this before, but I want to just kind of, you know, uh, reinforce the idea. This doesn't work. So when you ask for shape, it says shape is abstract, cannot be instantiated. Well, that's because it's partly hollow. You know, I mean, it doesn't have an area filled in, and actually it, it doesn't have a compare to filled in. It doesn't have either of those things filled in. So you can't construct a shape object because shape is this uh, abstract thing, the, the, uh, the interface. All right, um, let me, uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, what we have. So uh, I have the circle class that has this various code, including the compare to, the rectangle with all of this code, including the compare to, the square class, all of this code, including the compare to. Well, what we did works, but it should kind of offend you at a certain level. Uh, what we did is we did a copy paste. I took this chunk of code, compare to, and I copied it and I put it in all three different classes. Uh, I've talked about the idea that we don't like to do that. We don't want to have three copies of code. We want to have one copy of code uh, so that, uh, that that way it's easier to maintain. Uh, if we introduce a bug, you know, uh, I mean, if we're fixing a bug, we don't have to fix it in multiple places. The, you know, it's just a very bad idea to have multiple copies of code. So uh, another idea then would be, could we somehow include it in the interface? So could I include the compare to in the interface? So it's an interesting possibility. Um, if I hit compile, I get, uh, yeah, we can end the interactions and go ahead and see what the compiler says about this. It says, uh, uh, interface abstract methods cannot have a body. And notice it's pointing at the open curly brace. Remember what I said is that you have an open curly brace and then some code, you know, leading up to a, uh, a closed curly brace you know, that that's basically the code for, that's the body of the method, you know, some concrete definition. You're not allowed to do that in an interface. It's a little bit 
trickier than this? You know, I've been giving this lecture for a long time, and wouldn't you know uh, that uh, uh, the Java folks would kind of screw me over in a way. Starting with Java 8, they introduced something known as default methods. So you actually could make this work by defining this as a default method. And it's a very interesting question. You know, they, they introduced the idea of default methods uh, into interfaces for a particular reason, and it's not this kind of situation. So I actually think that the people who, the Java designers who put default methods in there would say this is not an appropriate use of a default method. So it's kind of interesting that it works, but it's not really what they had in mind for what you would use a default method for. And I'm gonna make another change after this one where a default method wouldn't work. And so uh, I'm gonna kind of uh, talk about this other possibility, but I did wanna mention that you know, Java uh, evolves over time, it becomes a more complicated uh, language with more options available to it. There is kind of this, this, this uh, option of having a default method. Uh, I don't wanna talk about the default method, so I'm gonna kind of talk about it, kind of the, more the old fashioned uh, way of thinking about this in Java. Well, let me mention uh, an idea uh, kind of of what's going on here. So we have been writing concrete classes, uh, you know, is one of the things that we've been writing here in Java. And uh, we're seeing here how to do an interface. And what I would say about the concrete classes, the normal kind of classes that, we're, that we've been writing, is that they're all filled in. You know, there's nothing that's hollow. There's nothing that's missing in a concrete class. And what about an interface? Well, what we've been doing in an interface, so ignoring the idea of default methods, nothing is filled in. It's all hollow. Uh, and so one, one of the ways that you might describe that is purely abstract. Everything is abstract. Everything is not filled in. And so, uh, that's kind of a choice that we have, is between a concrete class and, and, uh, and a purely abstract. You know, so either uh, nothing is filled in or everything is filled in. That's, that's the examples that we've been looking at. But what are we trying to do here? We're trying to do an in-between. We're trying to have a method compared to that is filled in, so we want that to be concrete and to have an actual definition to it, but we don't want to fill in area. So we want one thing filled in, one thing hollow. So it's kind of a mixture of those things. That's what, that's the, uh, uh, and we're gonna see kind of uh, what Java prefers for that. So uh, in this case, because we want part of it filled in, I'm gonna change this to be a class. Uh, and when it's a class, we're gonna need to say implements comparable of shape. Um, if I hit compile here, now it's, it's thinking it's gonna be a concrete class where everything is filled in, and it says area is myth missing its body. So now it's pointing at the semicolon. Uh, you can see that here. Uh, oh, it's pointing at the name of the method, okay. But in any event, it's, it's unhappy with this, you know, that it kind of wants us to fill something in. So what do you fill in for area? You know, sometimes people suggest something like, well, what if you return 0.0? .0? You know, you could do that. That could be kind of the definition we give to the area method. I don't think that's a good choice because that, you know, that isn't what the area is going to be. There's only one thing that has an area of 0.0, .0 and that's a point, you know. So things don't have an area of 0.0, .0 in general. So I like the idea of not filling it in, but then what are my options? Well, the compiler error message is interesting missing method body or declare abstract. So there's an option available to us where I can say public abstract double area. Notice it's in purple, so it's a Java keyword. I can let Java know that this method, I am not filling it in. You know, it's an abstract method, a method that's not filled in. Now in an interface, they're all abstract. None of them are filled in. Uh, and this is, as I say, this combination where one is filled in and one is not. Uh, if I hit compile, I get an error message that says shape is not abstract and does not override abstract method area. Well, it turns out that if this class is going to have an abstract method in it, then the class itself 
has to be declared abstract. So, well, it's because part of it's hollow. Part of it is, is not filled in. Uh, so uh, that was kind of what I was going to show on a line here, that there's a kind of an option in the middle, which we would refer to as an abstract class. And that's what I mentioned as kind of the title for uh, uh, the, the lecture today, uh, where you have some of each, where you have some things filled in and some things that are abstract. So that's, that, th this is this weird in between, uh, but you know, not so weird. It's actually uh, uh, somewhat common. Uh, I'm gonna show you another example of it. I believe it's uh, on Friday, we're gonna see another example of this when we talk about, um, I'm gonna give you yet another version of array int list and linked int list, and we're gonna make use of an abstract class when we do that. So uh, an abstract class is an in-between, uh, partly hollow, partly filled in. Let me hit compile. And uh, let me remind you, uh, when we were in the interactions pane, remember when we asked for a new shape, uh, that when we tried to do that, it gave us an error message, it still gives us an error message. You know, the abstract class, even though it's a class, it's an abstract class. So you're not allowed to ask for a new shape object because it doesn't know how to fill in the hollow part. It doesn't know how to fill in the area part. So the compare to is filled in, but this is not filled in. So that's why you can't, uh, you can't construct a, a shape object. All right, let me come back over here. These now need to say extends instead of implements because we are using inheritance now. Um, and, you know, but now there's a reason for doing the inheritance. The reason is so that we don't have to have this duplicated compare to method. So I'll be able to get rid of that compare to method here. Uh, and let me hit compile. Yeah, we don't need the interactions anymore. So this compiles now. Similarly for a rectangle, we're gonna be able to get rid of the compare to because now this is an inherited method that it, it inherits because this is going to extend the shape class. Uh, so uh, we can compile this. And square, we can also get rid of this. So instead of having three copies of compare to, I have just one copy of compare to in the shape class and the other three extend it. So the other three all inherit that, uh, that compare to method uh, because they extend shape. All right, let me come back over here. Let's just kind of make sure that our program still compiles and runs. And so uh, it printed out the original sequence from the array, and now it's, it's printing them out after having been sorted. So, uh, so it still works, that's good. So the code that we wrote still works, uh, and now our classes have gotten shorter than they were before. So that's what circle looks like. Uh, take a look at this because I want to make another improvement. So, you know, think about, uh, so if, think about how this circle class compares against this rectangle class, uh, which, you know, and compared against this square class. Is there anything that's redundant between these three? And what I, what usually someone points out that the to string method is, is pretty common. You know, it's pretty similar in these three different things. So there was a to string that said circle of area such and such, a to string here that said rectangle of area such and such, and here we're gonna say square of area such and such. So let me make a copy of this code. What I'd like to do is to think about the idea of whether we can have the to string method in the shape class. So can we write it once and inherit it in all three subclasses? Well, the, the, the to string method calls the area method, but that's not a problem because uh, we know that, uh, that area exists. I mean, that was part of the abstract class was that we require that there's an area method. Um, what's the thing that's gonna be different between them? And it's this word here that we don't necessarily say square, uh, that we say some kind of name, you know, something like that, name of area such and such. So how do we do that? What do we do for the name? I get lots of interesting suggestions for this. Some people ask, well, can we ask the class what its name is? 
The answer is yes, you actually can ask a class what its name is. So that would be an interesting way to solve it, would be to get the name of the class. Um, but I kind of wanted to give uh, more flexibility, that, that somebody might want to use a name other than the name of their class. We sometimes use funny names for classes. So uh, what if you wanted to be able to uh, fill in the name with something else? And uh, I've had people suggest, well, what if it was a parameter? so that you passed in the name when you called to string. Well, that's a 142 style solution. Uh, that would be great. I mean, that would mean that anytime somebody would call to string and pass it a name, that it would, it would include that name. But that's not the way to string is written, right? To string uh, is a zero argument, you know, a uh, paren paren uh, method. This is not the to string that everybody calls. So basically, this would be a to string method that nobody ends up calling. So uh, we, we can't have a parameter. What do we do instead? Some people suggest the idea of some kind of a method that would tell you the name. We could do that, but uh, I think this is a case where, you know, if, I wa if, if it wasn't the fact that I'm dealing with an abstract class, if I was just thinking about how I would solve this in general, uh, I would tend to think, let's have a field. Let's have some, some field called name, you know, that, that a shape will keep track of what its name is. And how do you give a value to a field? Well, you set up a constructor, right? So we could have, say, string name here. And uh, we can say this dot name is assigned to name. So when you go to construct a shape object, you have to say what name you want to use. And we use that to set the field. And then we use the value of that field later with the to string. This is a strange idea. Uh, I mean, I'll t I mean, I don't, it may not seem strange to you, but, uh, but I'll tell you why it seems strange to me. We saw when we were in interactions pain that you can't, you can't construct a shape object. You're not allowed to construct a shape object. So how can we have a constructor for something that can't be constructed? You know, that's the thing that's odd. You know, it's, it's still true. You know, I mean, now I'd have to fill in a string, but uh, even if I fill in a string, it's going to say, no, 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 it's an abstract class. It's got hollow parts to it, it, you know, like the area method. You can't ask for a new shape even if you give it a string. So it's an odd idea, but in a way, I'm, I'm giving you a more complete understanding of what happens with inheritance. I've mentioned the idea that when you extend a class, that you inherit its fields. So uh, when I say over here, uh, for example, of the circle class, that it extends shape, that means it's going to have a field called name that, uh, that it inherits from the shape class. So it's going to inherit that field, but that field is private. So that means that the circle class does not have access to that field called name. It doesn't have a way to set that field. The way that field gets set is through this shape constructor. Well, how does the shape constructor get called? Let me first make sure that this compiles. Uh, what did I, oh, I introduced an error because uh, for some reason I got rid of my final uh, right curly brace. Uh, I must have accidentally selected it when I was pasting in the to string. So this compiles, that's good. Let me come over to the circle class and uh, uh, so uh, we're going to want to be able to get rid of the toString method uh, so that we'll use the inherited one. But I wanted to show you that there's an interesting error message when I hit compile. What it says is error, uh, constructor shape in class shape cannot be applied to the given types. And it's pointing at this circle constructor right here. So what it's saying is, the circle constructor is calling the shape constructor. Do you see the circle constructor calling the shape constructor? Uh, so there's a kind of an obscure detail here that you have to understand when you have more complex inheritance hierarchies. I mentioned it once before, although uh, if you remember it, uh, you know, uh, kudos to you, I give you extra credit points for remembering. But um, there was a, a lecture where I talked about a point class, and we had a variation of the point class, and we, we, I talked about the idea of calling superclass constructors. But let me just kind of tell you again the idea there. So um, something that is true of Java classes 
is that the first thing that a constructor does is that it always calls a superclass constructor using this notation, you know, super and then parentheses. So we've kind of seen the idea that you can have one constructor call another constructor by using the this notation. And that's still true. You can kind of, you know, uh, instead of having, having this be the constructor, you can have the, the code be in the other one. But if you're not going to be calling this, then uh, there's always a call on the superclass constructor. Always. So it's going to do that. And it's, you know, so the rule that Java has is if you don't call a superclass constructor, then it will fill this in for you. It will fill in a call on a superclass constructor of zero arguments. So it's trying to call a, a superclass constructor, you know, the superclass is shape. It's trying to call a shape constructor that takes zero arguments. And what it's finding over here in the shape class is that there's one and only one constructor that takes a string. So what it's saying is that the call that you're making on the superclass constructor has no arguments. That's what it found was a call on a constructor of no arguments. And what it needs is a call on a constructor that takes a string. So this is a case where you can't just rely on Java's default filling in for you of super paren paren. You have to make the call on the superclass constructor. And so you have to pass it a string. So this is where that connection is made. So what the circle class would do is call the shape constructor passing at the string circle. So even though we can't make a shape object on its own, uh, we know that a circle object is an extension of a shape. So kind of at its core, there's the part of the circle object that's the shape part. And so what we're doing here in this call on the superclass constructor is we're constructing that inner part, the shape part of a circle. And we're, we're, we're passing it a string to fill in that part of it. And that sets this field that's kind of the inner uh, inherited field that's the shape part of a circle. But now a circle does more than just that. It also has a field called radius. So not only does it kind of construct the inner shape part of it, but it constructs the rest of it as well. But so I need a call on the superclass constructor, passing it a string. Let me compile this. And I'll come over here. Uh, rectangle needs a call on the superclass constructor, passing it rectangle. And then we won't need the to string method. And so we can compile that. Uh, and then for the square, we need to also have a call on the superclass constructor passing it square, and then we won't need the to string. Now, I could, I could compile and uh, recompile everything, run everything again, but uh, what you'd find uh, is that it still works. You know, so this new version works. I want to mention a few things, so that's why I'm not going to bother to show it to you one more time. I'm just asking you to take my word for it. But I did want to point out, these classes now are super short. They're kind of just describing what's special about a circle. It has a field. Uh, and a constructor that sets its name, and it has a particular way of doing an area. Rectangle has similar stuff, square has similar stuff. So uh, they're very short now, these classes that extend our abstract class. I wanted to mention, uh, I think I have time to mention these two ideas. So uh, we wouldn't want someone to override the compare to method. You know, I mean, you might have somebody who decides that they're greater than every other object in the universe. So they just write a compare to that returns one. I am always greater. We don't want to let people do that. And there's a keyword that you can use final. You can make a method final that says that subclasses are not allowed to override this. I would do that with the to string as well. You know, I don't want some joker to be able to change their to string so that it's something that looks a little bit uh, weird. You even have the option of making a class final. We wouldn't do that here because we're counting on subclasses to give a value to the, to the area method. Uh, but there are final classes that are, aren't allowed to have subclasses. The string class, for example, is a final class. So that's kind of a last thing I wanted to mention. Uh, I don't think there's quite enough time for this, but I thought I would mention, maybe I'll just see, uh, should square extend rectangle uh, uh, tangle is an interesting question that, that's a very controversial question. 
The answer is no, because a square is not a reasonable substitute for a rectangle. A rectangle can be stre stretched in either direction. A square can only be stretched in one dimension. So uh, anyway.